There's a couple of clips that are going to follow this little clip um, showing the same dog on a, a second session. Um, what I want to uh, clarify uh, and sort of punctuate really is the fact that what I'm not doing is criticising positive reinforcement. I'm not belittling positive reinforcement. Um, I absolutely love training and working dogs and incorporating the use of positive reinforcement. My issue is with purely positive reinforcement or force-free, uh, positive only, reward-based only. That's the issue that I have. That's, that's what I'm trying to highlight in the video that I'm showing with the, the Border Terrier and the Chicken is that it has limitations. Everything has limitations and positive reinforcement isn't exempt from that or from those limitations. And the other thing I want to uh, briefly just, just clarify really is the procedures that people would, um, and it is primarily um, uh, extremists, um, people with um, one end of the ideological spectrum if you like, um, would choose to tackle or would look at behaviours such as entrenched chase behaviours and would look at using, um, as has been mentioned on a, a page that the videos appeared on, um, desensitisation, systematic desensitisation and counter conditioning and procedures like that. And I've mentioned these before, so I'm not going to go massively into detail. But if I look at systematic desensitisation and why systematic desensitisation wouldn't work in this situation, in a chasing, in a dog that has a, a strong and determined um, predatory uh, behaviour, predatory ch chain that it's, it's um, displaying. And the reason being that when Walk developed um, systematic desensitisation, it was developed for use in um, addressing anxiety-related behaviours, uh, anxiety-related uh, related associations and responses and phobias and things like that. And the three um, parts that make up systematic desensitisation are firstly, deep muscle relaxation. So the subject needs to be deeply relaxed. And then what they will do is put their fears or phobias in a hierarchy, depending on how much anxiety each one elicits. And then third and finally, the subject is asked to visualise, to mentally rehearse, to visualise each of those um, uh, anxiety eliciting situations or, or stimuli in um, ascending order. Okay, so starting with the weakest and then visualise and go through uh, higher and higher. That has got absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with a dog chasing a sheep. Nothing whatsoever. There's no ang anxiety, there's no fear, there's no phobia. It wants to do it. It's an appetitive stimulus and it's a, a self-rewarding behaviour. It's an intrinsically rewarding behaviour. So systematic de desensitisation is inadequate um, for that situation. So then we'd look at counter conditioning, okay, which is another one. Counter conditioning again. So we're looking at the, the um, effect that the environment has on the subject. Now, if I'm in an environment that I find exciting and I find fun and it elicits a behaviour in me, it makes me want to do something because I've done it before in that environment and it's been fun and it's been rewarding and it's been enjoyable, you know, and it's made, made, made me want to do it again and it's felt like a release, then I can't make that environment less likely to elicit that response in me by rewarding me. Do you know what I mean? I can't. If I put myself into that environment, um, then I'm going to think, oh, here I am again, and this is what happens in this environment, and I know that this, this, and this. Well, what, what you'd be looking at there is basically introducing an incompatible behaviour, behaviour incompatible with chasing, and trying to um, heavily reinforce that so that that outweighs the chasing in that context. So that context comes to say to me, oh, I know what I do here, I return, I walk at heel, I sit and stay, I give eye contact, or whatever else it is, rather than chasing the sheep. The problem with it is that the dog would rather chase the sheep because my rewards aren't as rewarding as the sheep. I've said this umpteen times over, I, mean, I bore myself to be completely honest, and Christ knows what I must do to the people who ever listen to this, um, but I ca cannot outcompete it. Now, for some ridiculous reason, and I don't know what it is, the, the concept of a timely correction, a timely, appropriate correction, is considered to be some sort of like filthy abuse of an animal. And it is absolutely ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. It's extremist. You know, to say that, 
I do a thing, a negative consequence occurs, I do something else, a positive consequence occurs, and it continues to occur. I try the negative, well, negative thing occurs again, I carry on with this, positive, 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 positive. I'm now able to train that dog with a huge amount of positive reinforcement because I put just a sprinkle of um, punishment and subsequent negative reinforcement in there as well.